Today I am going to read a story of Heidi by Johanna Spirey. A long time ago there lived a beautiful little girl named Heidi. She grew up in the care of her mother's sister, Auntie Che, who loved her a lot. Heidi's mother and father had passed away when she was just a baby. When Heidi turned five, Auntie Che got the job of a housekeeper in a wealthy household in Frankfurt, the household that allowed Heidi, and so Auntie Che was forced to take a decision to leave Heidi with her only other relative, her paternal grandfather, who lived all by himself in the high alpine mountains. Now Heidi's grandfather was a mean old man who cared for no one, but little Heidi did not know this. When Auntie Tree left her with her grandfather, she was overjoyed to be in a new place. She did not even notice the sour looks on the old man's face. The old man, who was called Uncle Am, by all the villagers, had no idea as to what to do with Heidi. But seeing the trust Heidi seemed to have in him right from the start, his heart melted. He began to appreciate her childish pranks and never-ending queries. Heidi, on the other hand, was ever curious about her new surroundings. She loved the two little goats her grandfather had. She relished the cheese and the fresh homemade bread he gave her and always asked him for another helping. When her grandfather suggested, how about fixing your bed on the loft so you can see the moon and the stars through the little window there, her joy knew no bounds. Thus, Heidi began to enjoy her stay in the high mountains with her grandfather. She loved the cool, crisp air and the greenery all around. Heidi spent most of her time playing with her grandfather's two little goats and the little boy, Peter, who tended to them. Peter knew a lot of things that little Heidi did not know, and he impressed her with all his knowledge. With the Gothard, Peter took the little goats to the high pastures to graze every day. Heidi accompanied them and returned only when the sun set. Heidi adjusted very well to the mountain life. She loved every moment of it and spent her days playing with the goats and Peter. Heidi did not idle away her time in her grandfather's house. She was eager to learn new things every day. She begged her grandfather, teach me to milk the goats and make the goat cheese, grandfather. Her grandfather, in turn, was very happy to teach her, and as the days went by, he grew very fond of her. But one day, Auntie Tui returned to the mountains, wanting to speak to Uncle Am, she said. The household next to the one where I work in Frankfurt have a little girl named Clara, who cannot walk. They require a companion for her of her age. I suggested Heidi, and they seem to be excited to have her in the house. I will have to take her with me. Uncle Am, who had gotten so used to Heidi and her loving presence was very unhappy to send her away, and Heidi, too, refused to go. She cried and said, I don't want to leave my favorite mountains, my grandfather and my goats. Heidi, she consoled her and replied, I will see that you come back soon. It's only for a short while. You can earn lots of money and buy gifts for all your friends here. Reluctantly, Heidi left the mountains for her new home in Frankfurt. When Heidi reached the house in Frankfurt, everything was again extremely new to her. The rich man's daughter, Clara, was delighted to see Heidi, and they instantly became friends. The butler, Sebastian, also seemed to take a liking to Heidi, and he smiled at her, welcoming her into the house. Heidi, too, returned their affection eagerly. Clara was confined to the wheelchair, and they spent the days talking to each other. Heidi told their stories of alpine mountains and the life there. Clara loved to hear about the exciting life in the mountains and longed to go there. But not everyone was friendly with little Heidi. Clara's governess, Miss Rodenmayer, did not like Heidi and her literate ways of eating and lack of etiquette. 
when Clara's grandmother came down for a visit. Miss Rademeyer complained to her, saying, I don't understand why we need this child. She's illiterate and doesn't seem to be helping our Clara in any way. But Clara's grandmother, who had liked Heidi the minute she saw her, called Heidi aside and said, I will teach you to read and write like Clara. Then you can learn and read a lot of new things, she added. Heidi immediately grew excited over the prospect of learning something new. She began to learn to read and in a few days she had picked up a lot of new words and was reading fairly well. But deep inside in her heart, little Heidi always missed the Alpine mountains and her grandmother. Sometimes she missed them so much that she would walk in her sleep dreaming of the high mountains. She dreamed to the goats with her little bells tinkling, her grandfather and her dear friend Peter. One day, when Clara's dad was in his study, he heard the sound of the front doors being unlocked in the middle of the night. When he came out, he was shocked to find a little figure in a nightdress standing like a ghost in the doorway with her arms outstretched. When he went closer, he saw that the little ghost was none other than Heidi. He realized that she was walking in her sleep, and he gently carried her back to bed. The next morning, the family doctor was summoned, and he asked Heidi, Little girl, do you have anything on your mind? Do you know that you were walking in your sleep last night? Heidi burst into tears when she heard this, and she said, I miss my mountain home and my grandfather very much. I like being here with Clara, but I want to go home. Every night I dream that when I open the front door of the house, the mountains and my grandfather's house and the little goats are just outside the door. But when I wake up in the morning, there's nothing there and I feel so sad. I miss them a lot. The doctor, on seeing how homesick Heidi was, turned to Clara's father and told him, this little girl will become very sick if she is not sent home immediately. I recommend you to make arrangements for her to go back to the mountains, which she seems to miss a lot. Heidi was overjoyed at hearing this. She apologized to Clara for wanting to go back, but Clara, for, but Clara was very understanding and reassured her, saying, My father has promised to take me to your beautiful mountains this summer. If all goes well, we will meet again, Heidi. Heidi and her aunt left early the next morning and reached her mountain home the very next day. She ran as fast as her little legs could carry her, and when her grandfather saw the little figure coming uphill, he was overjoyed, and he ran down to meet her. They hugged each other, and together they went inside the hut. Heidi quickly got down the creamy rich goat milk and the yummy cheese her grandfather gave her. Oh, how she had missed all this. Winters went by and soon summers came with the news of Clara coming to the Alpine Mountains. Clara had kept her word and soon her father with Clara in her wheelchair were mounting up the hills. Heidi was overjoyed to see her dear friend. Heidi and Clara hugged each other and tears of joy streamed down their lovely faces. One day, Clara's wheelchair rolled downhill and broke into a thousand pieces. Heidi encouraged Clara not to be disheartened but to try and walk. She and Peter would hold Clara, who tried hard to walk to please her two friends. By the end of the summers, Clara could walk without assistance, thanks to Heidi's efforts and her grandfather's rich diet of cold milk and cheese. When it was time for Clara to go back, Heidi was in tears. Clara's father promised little Heidi that Clara would spend her every summer in the Alpine Mountains with Heidi and her grandfather. Clara's father gave some money to Uncle Um to help Heidi get an education and to invest for her future. And as the sun set down the Alpine Mountains, Heidi and Clara bade a sad farewell to each other. Heidi slowly walked back to her little cottage on the mountains, thinking of summers when her dear friend Clara would visit her again.